Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Greece Public Library's book break for this Wednesday, October 7th. Uh, my name is Kirstra. I'm a librarian here. I moderate the Pints and Prose book discussion group and the virtual science fiction and fantasy book discussion group. And as always, I am here with Claire. Hello, everyone. I'm Claire, and I moderate As the Page Turns book group and also the historical fiction on Facebook. So Yay. welcome on this rainy Wednesday. <laughs> I know. It is like the perfect day for curling up with a book. Yes, um, absolutely. So at least we get to talk about books. <laughs> Um, so last time, I promised you all that we would be talking about scary books, um, and I lied. <laughs> we had to do a little bit of schedule rearranging. My uh, fault, my fault. No <laughs> worries. So today we're just going to do our sort of monthly roundup, and then our next book break um, towards the end of October, a little closer to Halloween, we will be bringing the spooky book discussion. So, um, so do you want to kick us off, Claire, for today? Oh, sure. I'm going to kick us off with uh, one. My, I got my daughter to read, um, join the Book of the Month Club with me. And so mm -hmm. now we're doing a mother-daughter read every month. And nice. the first one we did was The Last Story of Mina Lee. Um, and this one was interesting because it's a mother-daughter kind of story. Mm -hmm. um, it starts out with a bang. So you have two characters. You have Margot and her mother, Mina. Um, they don't really get along that well. There's a lot of distance between them. Mina has immigrated from Korea and Margot has not really embraced her ethnicity, if you will. Um, she doesn't speak Korean. She's kind of ashamed of her mother, the poverty that they've had to come in, but she's worried about her because she hasn't heard from her in two weeks and um, she's not answering her phone, which is mm. very, very unlike her. Um, so she's helping a friend move from Portland, where she lives, to Los Angeles, where she is from, and she decides to make a surprise visit to her mom um, while she's in town. But when she arrives at her old apartment, she's shocked to find that her mom looks like she's had an accident and she's passed away. Um, oh my god. So now you're immediately thrown into this. She has guilt. She's trying to discover more about her mother and as she's falling into this rabbit hole she discovers there was a lot about her mother that she didn't know um, she's never known who her father is so she is really starting to go on a trail of mystery because she's finding mm -hmm. things in her mom's desk she finds a newspaper clipping of a man that's passed away she noticed she resembles him mm -hmm. um, so it's very interesting and um the chapters alternate with Mina and Margot. So you get to hear like how Mina came to this country, you know, what happened to her once she came and the, um, you find out who the man is, what their relationship, you know, what happened to it. And there's a lot going on in this book. It kind of takes a while to get going, but once you get going and get interested in the story, um, you know, it's hard to put down. So, mm -hmm. um, I really, I really like this. I think it has a lot of things to talk about if you do a book discussion group, because there's a, um, you know, one of the things that really struck me is that her mom, you know, she went from working at a, gro a Korean grocery store to actually having her own shop, mm. which was destroyed in the Rodney King riots in LA. Um, and just the whole perspective of an immigrant who's afraid to go to the police for anything mm -hmm. because they're so afraid of being sent back to where they're from and what they had to run from and the, you know, it really makes you think and gives you pause. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this woman really overcame a lot. And I think in the end, her daughter had a sense of pride and a different sense of who her mom was. So yeah, nice. very good. Very cool. No, that sounds good. Another one to add to my list. <laughs> I know. We are always adding each other's books I to know. our list. I know. All the time. It never ends. Um, so my next book is actually one from my stack of shame, which is very exciting. So Woo! My Dark <laughs> Vanessa. Um, so this book was excellent, um, but kind of a tough read. 
in a lot of ways. So um, the, the basic story surrounds Vanessa Y. She's our main character. Um, we have sort of two different time periods of Vanessa. Um, so we start with present day Vanessa, who is in her early 30s. She's working um, not exactly a dead end job, but definitely um, like a punch in punch out kind of job. Um, she seems to have some issues with alcohol. She seems to have no sort of stable relationships. Like she's kind of a mess. Um, mm -hmm. And we flash back and to Vanessa at 15 um, when she goes off to this prestigious boarding school in her home state of Maine um, and meets Jacob Strain, who is her English teacher as a 15 year old and they start having a relationship. Um, so there's some tough subject matter there. Um, so we get sort of Vanessa's whole perspective of that student teacher, um, I'm gonna call it relationship. She refers to it as an affair. Um, the reader is sort of left to draw their own conclusions um, in a lot of ways about uh, this relationship. And then we see how that relationship sort of shapes the rest of her life and has repercussions like all the way into adulthood, um, like 15 years later for Vanessa. Um, and the sort of the um, event in the present day timeline, the adult timeline that sort of sparks things off is another former student of this same teacher has come forward with an accusation of sexual abuse. So Vanessa really has to reckon with her memories of this time and sort of sort through how um, she remembers this relationship as um, a positive one. Like she believed that she was in love with this teacher and the teacher was in love with her. Um, there are lots of references um, very overt, like literal references to Lolita, which I've never read. Um, and I have not either. So. And I've never really been interested in reading it. Um, but then reading this book made me kind of want to read it just so that I understood the references a little better, not because now I need to read all of the books about teenagers and age inappropriate relationships. <laughs> um, but one thing that I will say that um, Kate Elizabeth Russell, who's the author, one thing that she does super duper well is like there is, again, some really tough subject matter and there are some explicit parts of the book, um, but she never lets the reader become a voyeur. Like you're never, um, it's never like exciting what's happening. You're not supposed to feel good about what's happening on the page during those parts. Mm -hmm. So there's, there is sort of that, um, a little bit of distance that you get um, that kind of helps to keep it from feeling super dirty to read yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, exactly. So it was good. I, we, my husband and I were on a long car trip recently and we were listening to this on audio and the first like hour or two I was getting the sidelong <laughs> looks like why, why what are we doing why are we listening to this but once we got about four or five hours in he was like all right I like let's go I need to know I need to know where this is going what's going to happen um so there is definitely it's not just a women's book like there is broader appeal there. It's a well-crafted story, even if okay. it is dark subject matter. Um, and then on the audiobook, the other plug that I will put for listening to this one is that at the very end, there's um, some bonus material, including a conversation between the author, the editor, and the narrator of the book um, that is really, really worth a listen. And the author talks um, some about her process um, and her influences, and that was fascinating to listen to. So, right. My Dark Vanessa, it's a good one. Tough, but good. All right. Oh, one other thing. Yes. 
they uh, mentioned food a lot. And if you know me, <gasps> you realize it's like I could almost smell the food as they're cooking. So if you're a foodie, another another appeal nice. for that book. Did it, it make you want to go get some some bibimbap? Yeah, some Korean food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice. And actually, I posted a Korean meal that I fixed with the book, and mm. so I was reading it, and the author commented, so, wow, made my day. Uh, nice. All right. <laughs> so moving on, finally, yes. Claire. Um, one by One by Ruth Ware. I know we've mentioned other Ruth mm -hmm. Ware books, um, both you and I liked In a mm -hmm. Deep Dark Wood or In a Dark Dark Wood. In a Dark or, Dark Wood, yeah. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So she's been billed as the Agatha Christie of our generation. And that mm. is how one by one really struck me. Okay. Um, it's to start up this setting, you have um, a very rustic ski chalet, very upscale, um, I believe in the French Alps and a lot of characters. There's a, an English startup company um, called Snoop, which allows you to listen in real time to music that many celebrities and whatever are are listening to so mm -hmm. you know if you and you can follow people and play along mm -hmm. so this company um in the book has skyrocketed and you can tell there's going to be like a takeover bid or there's mm -hmm. different people that started the company are feeling different ways so that's starting out with one of the premises um the other is they've decided to go and have a meeting at the ski chalet and of course um, get snowed in avalanche um you know the 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 classic you know we can't mm -hmm. contact anyone type of thing and of course bodies start you know getting picked off um so the only thing i didn't like about it is you know right away that there's one person that's kind of mentally unstable mm. um, or can figure it out if you read as many books as Claire has <laughs> and probably Kirster as well. Mm. Um, so that I wasn't really surprised at who it ended up being. Mm -hmm. um, I did enjoy learning the backstory of each of the characters because of course you have the the guy that started the company who was a rich wealthy boarding school English guy. Um, you know some of his friends went in with them. You have his ex-girlfriend who's still in the, who is a beautiful supermodel, of course, you know, <laughs> um, who's still involved with the company, but they're no longer together. And um, the supermodel is the first one that is, is you oh, know, no. down for the count. Um, there's also the, the private chef that was hired, Danny, and, and then the kind of the manager and the concierge of the, the chalet. They each have their own backstories. Um, so it, it's, it's really interesting in that, and the setting is very well done. You know, you can feel the snow, you can feel the oppressiveness. Um, mm -hmm. Probably a great book to read in the winter if you're into that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the only thing is I, I was not at all surprised. Um, but if you like, you know, this type of mystery mm -hmm. where you know, you're trying to figure out who is next, you know, one by one by Ruth Ware is a, is a recommend if you like the mystery genre, but it's definitely not the best one I've ever read or, okay. or is it my favorite one of hers. So. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, my next one is um, The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Uh, this is the first in a series, uh, the first in a trilogy. Uh, the trilogy is called His Dark Materials. Um, we have this one shelved in the teen section. Um, I've seen it some places, I think, even in the children's section. Um, I read this as an adult and I loved it. Um, so our main character is Lyra Balakwa. Um, she is an orphan growing up. Um, at Oxford University. Um, it feels kind of um, Victorian in the period, um, but it becomes clear that we're in kind of an alternate universe. So um, there are some things that don't match up with the way our timeline works. Um, 
but so Lyra kind of runs around <laughs> uh, kind of like a little, uh, well, she is an orphan, but she just sort of runs around and evades responsibility as much as she can. And um, she's friends with like all of the um, serving kids that work in the university and um, all of the townies. And she just has kind of like this feral childhood, basically. Um, and then the children from the town, so the serving children and the um, other kids, start to disappear. So Lyra goes off on a quest to figure out, um, and then one of her friends disappears. So she has to go and find out what happened to her friend. And this kicks off um, a whole adventure. Um, there are armored polar bears and witches. And um, my favorite character is Lee Scoresby, who's kind of like a Wild West gunslinger in a hot air balloon. like. It's great. He's kind of like an Indiana Jones almost crossed with a cowboy with a hot air balloon. <laughs> um, What's not to like about that? You know? Right, right. So it's an adventure. There are adults who try to help her and adults that we think we're going to trust. And then we find out that they are not trustworthy. Um, and there's like giant conspiracies that she sort of discovers by pulling on these little threads like the little kids, orphan kids that no one cares about, she goes looking for them. And that kind of unravels this whole conspiracy. Um, so I don't want to give away too much. Um, it's an excellent adventure book. Um, Lyra is a great character. She is um, resourceful and sassy and feral. <laughs> uh, doesn't take kindly to adults trying to tell her what to do. Um, and again, it's the first book in a trilogy. So the, the universe just sort of, the universe of the book just kind of keeps expanding with the additional okay. books. Um, there is also an HBO series now. Um, there was a movie made of it in the like mid 2000s, which was eh, fine. Like the movie was great. And then I read the book and I was like, oh, that movie maybe wasn't as great as I thought it was. Um, they, ha they changed a lot, um, but HBO turned the first book into a series. Um, oh, cool. I'm not sure if it's been picked up for another season or not, um, but it's got James McAvoy and Lin-Manuel Miranda and a bunch of big names. Um, I've watched the first episode or two um, and it's it seems great. So, um, I would recommend the book. I would also recommend the series if you have access to HBO. All right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, my last one is one that I put on my little table for recommendations mm -hmm. a lot. It's called My Last Continent by Midge Raymond. And many people that know me know that I am not a romance reader at all. Mm -hmm. But this one is kind of, it is a romance that's, but it's set in a very different location. And you can tell as soon as you start reading that, that this is going to be a heartbreaker. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have is we have two characters, two main characters. Um, and they're very, you know, they're penguin researchers, um, which if you've ever wanted to go to Antarctica, you know, see the penguins, which of course I have. Um, <laughs> if you're, if you're just gonna have get seen them or have heart. wanted to see them. Oh, you I have not seen them. Okay, okay. I wanted to I was see like, them. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Nat Geo trip is, it was 10 grand like a couple yeah. of years ago, so I can only imagine what it is now. But if I ever hit the lottery, <laughs> I'm, I'm going. Um, nice. But there's a, um, all right, so we have Deb Gardner, who is a very serious penguin researcher. And it, you know, when you're a researcher like this, this becomes your life. So mm -hmm. for certain parts of the year, you're down there. Um, she's had a lot of bad luck in love and, and she's not comfortable with intimacy. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of personal problems involved with her. And then we have Keller Sullivan who comes down also. He's had kind of tragedy and everything in his life, um, but he doesn't have the scientific background, but he just falls in love with Antarctica. Um, 
and doing whatever he needs to do to stay at the research station. Um, so he does everything. He's like the dishwasher to the tag along guy and then, you know, a deeply dedicated explorer and naturalist. So these two eventually fall in love. Um, they kind of have a relationship like the penguins. They have their own separate journeys and they meet mm -hmm. again because they go back and forth. Um, so the love affair has as much to do with Antarctica as it does with mm. them, which is, is odd. Um, but the, the sad part is, is there's also like in the midst of the researchers, there's of course trips and everything. And there are some that are more ethical than others. Mm. Um, so you have cruise ships, you know, down there in the story. Um, and of course this is going to have horrible repercussions for, for all. Um, so that's, I don't want to give away too much about it, but you know, there is a hero, there is sadness, but yet in the mm -hmm. end it is hopeful because, um, while Deb goes and she's got this love affair, you know, she eventually will find happiness and it's kind of in an unexpected place, hmm. but like a friend who's been there for her all along. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, um, a lot of about the environment, global warming, and tourism, but not in an overtly preachy way. Um, but overall, it's the story of two people and nice. just the environment. And I really loved it. It's something totally different for me and mm -hmm. um, makes me really want to learn more. I have a book checked out right now that's called My Life with the Penguins. I think it's a mm -hmm. you know nonfiction book, so I can't wait to delve into that one too. So. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Um, all right. So my last one is sort of easing a little bit closer to the Halloween theme in some ways. It is uh, My Sister, the Serial Killer. But oh, I've read this William too. Ken Braithwaite, you have? Yeah. You like it? I, I it. did. It was, yeah. Okay. It was different. It's not my yes. typical type of read, but mm -hmm. although uh, I do love mysteries, though. So. Yes. Mystery and also like a super dark comedy, like pitch dark comedy, <laughs> I think. So yeah. let me, let me just read the first two sentences um, of the book. Uh, Iola summons me with these words. Corriday, I killed him. I had hoped I would never hear those words again. So that's how the book starts, um, with a heck of a bang. It's a, it's a little book. Um, so it is set in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, our main character is Koraday. She is a nurse at a hospital. Um, she's sort of the older, dutiful, responsible daughter. Um, Iola is her younger sister. She is beautiful, like every man immediately falls in love with her. Um, and as such, she has never really had to be responsible for anything in her life. Um, so Corade feels like she is always sort of metaphorically cleaning up after Iola. And then Iola starts killing her boyfriends. Um, and now Corade is very literally cleaning up after her, helping her to dispose of the bodies so that she doesn't get caught. Um, so the main thrust of the book is Corday uh, works with a doctor at the hospital that she's been like in love with and pining after for years, but he doesn't know. They think like he thinks they're just friends. Um, one day he meets Iola and falls in love with her and asks Corday for her number and starts dating her sister. So um, Corday then has this conflict of on several levels of um, you know, she's jealous of Iola and the doctor, um, but she's worried that the same thing is going to happen again um, with Iola. And then part of her is like, mm, but I'm mad at him <laughs> because he's dating my sister, not me. So um, there's a lot about the family dynamics in there. Um, this is another one that I listened to. Um, and I thought that added a lot. There's a lot of... Um, like African place names and um, 
I don't remember what language they're speaking, but there are like words and phrases in other languages thrown in. So having someone who can navigate that and all of the accents really adds a little something, I think, mm -hmm. um, for this one. Um, it is funny and sort of out there, like it's a little bonkers, um, but super entertaining from start to finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was interesting because I liked that dynamic and learning about the relationship of the mm -hmm. sisters and how she felt compelled to always, you know, kind of clean up after her and then to have her sister grab the one thing that she really wanted. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's that, you know, that sisterly bond, but, you know, you, where you love the person, but you're also like kind of chafing against that relationship at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And murder. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> Lots of murder and mayhem. <laughs> so yeah. um, if kind of bonkers murder and mayhem is your jam, um, you will really enjoy this book. And it's a super quick read. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So I think that's all we have for today. Um, but we will be back in two weeks. And in two weeks, we will have horror and scary books for you for Halloween. Yeah. So until then, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.